We continue today with chapter 30, The New Interpretation. Would God have left the meaning of the world to your interpretation? If he had, it has no meaning. For it cannot be that meaning changes constantly, and yet is true. The Holy Spirit looks upon the world as with one purpose, changelessly established, and no situation can affect its aim, but must be in accord with it. For only if its aim could change with every situation could each one be open to interpretation, which is different every time you think of it. You add an element into the script you write for every minute in the day, and all that happens now means something else. You take away another element, and every meaning shifts accordingly. What do your scripts reflect except your plans for what the day should be? And thus you judge disaster and success, advance, retreat, and gain and loss. These judgments all are made according to the roles the script assigns. The fact they have no meaning in themselves is demonstrated by the ease with which these labels change with other judgments made on different aspects of experience. And then, in looking back, you think you see another meaning in what went before. What have you really done except to show there was no meaning there? But you assigned a meaning in the light of goals that change, with every meaning shifting as they change. Only a constant purpose can endow events with stable meaning, but it must accord one meaning to them all. If they are given different meanings, it must be that they reflect but different purposes, and this is all the meaning that they have. Can this be meaning? Can confusion be what meaning means? Perception cannot be in constant flux and make allowance for stability of meaning anywhere. Fear is a judgment never justified. Its presence has no meaning but to show you wrote a fearful script and are afraid accordingly, but not because the thing you fear has fearful meaning in itself. A common purpose is the only means whereby perception can be stabilized, and one interpretation given to the world and all experiences here. In this shared purpose is one judgment shared by everyone and everything you see. You do not have to judge, for you have learned one meaning has been given everything, and you are glad to see it everywhere. It cannot change because you would perceive it everywhere, unchanged by circumstance. And so you offer it to all events and let them offer you stability. Escape from judgment simply lies in this. All things have but one purpose, which you share with all the world. And nothing in the world can be opposed to it, for it belongs to everything as it belongs to you. In single purpose is the end of all ideas of sacrifice, which must assume a different purpose for the one who gains and him who loses. There could be no thought of sacrifice apart from this idea, and it is this idea of different goals that makes perception shift and meaning change. In one united goal does this become impossible, for your agreement makes interpretation stabilize and last. How can communication really be established while the symbols that are used mean different things? The Holy Spirit's goal gives one interpretation meaningful to you and to your brother. Thus can you communicate with him and he with you. In symbols that you both can understand, the sacrifice of meaning is undone. All sacrifice entails the loss of your ability to see relationships among events. And looked at separately, they have no meaning. For there is no light by which they can be seen and understood. They have no purpose. And what they are for cannot be seen. In any thought of loss, there is no meaning. 
No one has agreed with you on what it means. It is a part of a distorted script which cannot be interpreted with meaning. It must be forever unintelligible. This is not communication. Your dark dreams are but the senseless, isolated scripts you write in sleep. Look not to separate dreams for meaning. Only dreams of pardon can be shared. They mean the same to both of you. Do not interpret out of solitude, for what you see means nothing. It will shift in what it stands for, and you will believe the world is an uncertain place in which you walk in danger and uncertainty. It is but your interpretations which are lacking in stability, for they are not in line with what you really are. This is a state so seemingly unsafe that fear must arise. Do not continue thus, my brother. We have one interpreter, and through his use of symbols are we joined, so that they mean the same to all of us. Our common language lets us speak to all our brothers, and to understand with them. Forgiveness has been given to us all, and thus we can communicate again. And from the workbook, Lesson 240. Fear is not justified in any form. Fear is deception. It attests that you have seen yourself as you could never be, and therefore look upon a world which is impossible. Not one thing in this world is true. It does not matter what the form in which it may appear. It witnesses but to your own illusions of yourself. Let us not be deceived today. We are the sons of God. There is no fear in us, for we are each a part of love itself. How foolish are our fears! Would you allow your son to suffer? Give us faith today to recognize your son and set him free. Let us forgive him in your name, that we may understand his holiness and feel the love for him, which is your own as well. Amen. <laughs>